Well, the state of the game came and went and it was once again filled with a host of information, so let's get stuck right in. The focus of the stream was primarily Endgame. To give you a stark contrast of how varied it is, here are two images of the map of The Division 2, one at level 15 and another at level 30. I mean, it's night and day when it comes to the difference. At level 30 you gain access to the final mission, a stronghold. The final climactic fight takes place here. After you beat the final mission stronghold, you see a cutscene, but it seems celebrations don't last and chaos ensues once again, and all havoc is about to break loose as the Black Tusks make their grand entrance, giving you more plot and story. After some scenes, you're now presented with the beginning of the endgame. The city is being invaded, and with this, you are introduced to the special missions, known as Invader Missions, which are harder versions of the missions that have been occupied by the Black Tusk. There are a couple of important factors to be aware of when it comes to strongholds. They will offer a difficulty selection after you beat them, and most importantly, they are very significant to the plot and story of the division. The devs in fact stressed, these are key points in the storytelling that will likely have cinematics based on the way they talked about these, which is again, amazingly good stuff. We all like a bit of plot and a bit of story and a bit of narration to take us through. So how do you gain access to the other strongholds? Strongholds are always gated by two invader missions. These also serve an additional purpose. Completing the story driven plotline strongholds will push you to the next world tier. So they do have a significant purpose and a significant lock onto them. You will want to do these as you progress through the main campaign. And once you've finished the main campaign, you will want to do these to progress through the world tiers to get that better elusive loot. Of course, strongholds will have barriers preventing you from progressing them until you're ready or have met the criteria. These involve both gear score and level. Of course, you will already be level 30, so it will be more gear score that matters. The level generally matters for the ones that you're locked out in the main campaign. With that said, World Tier 1 opens for agents when you finish the final story mission stronghold at the end of the campaign. Now this is where things get interesting. Once the invader missions are introduced, the Black Tusk move in and the world map becomes completely dynamic. Now, until you finish the game, everything in the world map you see is very static, it's very lifeless, it's pretty much just there for the sake of being there. But once you hit level 30, the world becomes alive and you start to see different warring factions as well as friendly factions and the Black Tusk battling for control. When this happens, you immediately know you're outnumbered. Unlike the Division 1 where you are in charge of the whole of New York, here in DC, outside of the White House, you are in charge of nothing. At this point, you get a call that you need a bigger gun. And with this, you're introduced, my friends, to the specializations. Pretty nice stuff, right? So far, I'm, you know, really, really liking the way this is going. I love the fact that they're pushing narration and story and plot lines just so much in this so far. Everything has a plot line with it. And for me, this is fundamental to my enjoyment of The Division. In Division 1, I couldn't connect to it so much because it just was missing the narration. However, here, it's fundamental to everything. So at this present time, I think this is pretty awesome. As you play the main game, you'll meet different friendly factions. These factions need support, food, water, necessities. If you provide them with these things they need to survive, they gain motivation. Motivation then leads them to act more in the open world by claiming points in the city as well as spreading propaganda. You'll start to see things and the civilians actually responding differently. While tier 1 to 3 at this point are regarded as the leveling process of the end game, while still putting you in the end game. From here you'll need to meet the criteria for each stronghold in line and then beat them. You simply repeat this process until you get to World Tier 4. Once you get to World Tier 4, things change dramatically. Before we continue on the World Tier 4 train, it's important to talk about two NPCs that were mentioned in the stream, The Snitch and Cassie Mendoza. While leveling 1 to 30, you'll meet an NPC called the snitch who will give you bounties. Closest thing to these are the HVTs from the Division 1, though these are starkly different. For people, they want dead. Again, they sound very similar, but I assure you, they will be different. The bounties snitch has are for a list of roaming NPCs called Decker 52. They are much like roaming bosses in the Division 1, but they will not respawn upon death. Yes, you've heard that right. They don't have a respawn timer. Instead, you need to take out all 52 before they reappear. Each one will also carry a card for identification for you to collect. It's pretty dark and gruesome, right? 
they're basically being told, here's a card, that is your call card. One for each person, 52 in total. A full pack of cards. What makes these bosses special and different to the HVTs from the Division 1 is the loot they carry. They will carry really, really good loot. So taking the time to take them out will be worth your time. What's even more exciting is the fact that they can actually team up with Roaming Black Task and fight against you, making each experience completely unpredictable and unique. Well, at least in principle, right? It never lives up to that. But, fresh mind, going by what they're saying, I know they're hyping the game, but at this point, just full on train. Based on what they're saying, this sounds really cool, and the more of this dynamic action and unpredictable scenarios that do take place, the better in my honest opinion. Cassie Mendoza was the second NPC I mentioned. Cassie is a gun runner. Think of Zer, and you're there. Literally, it's a replica. There is no difference. Cassie will always have a named weapon and items. It's important to note that you can't gain access to this vendor unless you meet the snitch through the main campaign, so there is no skipping to the good stuff. This NPC will have loot that cycles once a week, however their position in the world map will change throughout the week. See, it's Zer, just a version of Zer that actually does something. When you find Cassie, there will be a visible countdown to notify you when they are moving place. Note, buying weapons in World Tier 1, the weapons won't scale, so this is very important. So they will be useless in World Tier 2. However, if you're a collector and you want to start collecting from World Tier 1 to have a version of the weapon, well, you can start from World Tier 1. With that covered, World Tier 4 and 5 introduces a priority network of bounties. They start at a hard difficulty and eventually get to heroic. The loot is extremely good, in fact all bounties are lucrative and worth doing with the better weighted bounties like the weekly ones offering the better loot, but at no point will you feel that you've wasted your time and that the loot is bad. Now we mentioned bounties quite a lot in this video, but how do you gain access to them? You will gain access to bounties throughout the main campaign after meeting Otis Sykes, an NPC you recruit. Once you recruit him, you'll gain access to what's called targeted intel. You'll need these to learn information about the bounties that you'll gain from Otis and the snitch. These can be attained in free play and missions of difficulty hard and higher. At the start, you'll have two bounties a day, but this will eventually expand to four. World Tier 4 also brings the next tier in difficulty, challenging difficulty, so things do start to get a lot more exciting for the min maxer as they progress and pursue better gear. Priority missions return from Division 1 and will also unlock in World Tier 4. Along with these, the control points around the world map in World Tier 4 start upgrading from plus 1 to plus 4. Plus 4 signifying heroic level difficulty in the open world. And yes, beating one of these will reward you heroic level loot, not just the free play open loot that you expected in the Division 1. No, these will actually reward you with said loot that you would expect from a heroic difficulty challenge. So it's really safe to say World Tier 4 is when the true endgame begins, but what of World Tier 5? Well, Tidal Basin, you know that thing we saw in the trailer? The Black Tusk HQ unlocks World Tier 5, which unlocks even more features they haven't yet spoken about. This will not be available at launch and will be gated, however, I doubt many will hit World Tier 4 that quick anyway. Then again, who the hell am I kidding? The cult of the division is so strong, they will be World Tier 4 from the moment the game starts, right? I'm not joking, there are people out there that's already playing the game mentally in their heads. There is a cult out there, trust me. Well everyone, I hope you found this useful. If so, a like would be appreciated. Don't forget to activate yourself by subscribing and sharing so other agents may become aware of your plight. Until the next video agents, you're activated.